Hello. I am going to go live. Okay. All right. If you are on here live, I am just going to say that um, my chat is way slow for some reason. So I'm going to go through at the end to answer questions. And I'm actually going to type this in. If you are live, chat is way slow. So if you have questions, I will answer them at the end. Thank you for being here. Okay. I am going to come over here and share my screen. And in a second, we will get started. So, I'm Chelsea Newman, and I am excited to have you here for hopping on here with us. And I'm going to just jump right in. Um, this, we will be doing some guided imagery work later on in this session, and a few different little exercises to help this actually make a difference in our lives, not just something to learn, but something to change us from the inside out, right? So. Um, I recommend water because we're going to be working with emotions and they are chemicals in our body, right? And so I have a big bottle of water here and I recommend that. And also, um, I've been really emotional today. <laughs> so um, the last time I did this session with a group, um, it, uh, I don't know, it just opened my eyes up to some things and I feel like there is something or someone that really doesn't want me to be doing this session and I can feel the opposition in my life right now. So, um, but I just, I really feel like this is something that everybody needs in their lives, especially at this time. And so we're just going to go with it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the armor of God just for a few minutes, um, how I even came to be working with it this way in my life. And we're going to talk about what it is and what it can do in your life. And then we're going to go into some energetic work where we will see um, how we can actually apply to you in your real life. So with that said, um, how this came about is, let's see, I think it was in May of 2022. Um, my husband, he came to me and um, I think it was back pain. It might have been ankle pain. I don't fully remember. I, I wrote it down in my journal. I kind of grabbed my journal and, and looked at it. But he asked me if I would just kind of feel out what um, what it was. And so uh, a little bit more backstory on this is I use intuition to help heal things um, physically and spiritually. I, uh, and I love educating people on how to do that in their own lives. So, um, so I, I looked into his ankle and, or his, I think it was his ankle. I keep going back and forth. I should check my journal, but anyway, he was having this pain and I started looking into it. And, um, what I saw as I was looking into it were, <laughs> it was so strange, but I saw these shoes and it was like, they were there but he wasn't wearing them. And I saw all this in my mind's eye. And so I said, okay, well, why isn't he wearing them? And the thought came, 
he hasn't asked. And I thought, what is this all about? I just, I don't understand what is happening here. What are these shoes? And I heard um, there were two halves of feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I thought, I've heard that somewhere before, but at the time, um, I, I didn't remember where. And so I Googled it, feet shod with the preparation of peace. What does that even mean? I Googled those words and Ephesians 6 came up. And I was like, oh, this is part of the armor of God. And so we started kind of looking into it and getting um, with guided imagery. I basically just use my imagination. Um, I use prayer and intuition um, to know what needs to come next. And so I saw him putting these shoes on. And when I saw that happening, I saw that he was under attack. And so in my mind's eye, I hate to use this because of the connotation, but it really is what it looks like. It's um, in my mind, and I think it's just because it's an image that I'm familiar with. But if you have ever uh, read or watched Harry Potter and you think of Dementors, how they just like swoop down on people, I was seeing this happening to him. And it was like just one after another of these dark shadow creatures were just swooping in on him. And it was like sucking the light out of him. And I was like, this is really scary. But I saw him put these shoes on. As I was speaking to him, I didn't tell him what I was seeing. But um, I, I, I told him to imagine that there were these shoes. And I told him what, I, what they might look like. And I told him to put them on his feet. And as he did that, I saw it was like light came like out of the bottom of his feet and up around him and almost like a Patronus charm in Harry Potter. It was like those shadows kept swooping down, but they would bounce off of the shield that had come about him. And I thought, whoa, I don't totally understand all of this, but I felt like it was important. And I felt like I needed to be putting the armor on myself. And so the next couple of days I went through and I studied Ephesians 6 very deeply. And I went through for myself and put on each piece. And I saw, I just, there was so much peace that came into my life. And I felt like I could stand up straighter and like walk through life differently. And it made a real difference in my life. So it was just a really, really amazing, interesting experience. But so then I had a friend come up um, a few months later and approach me about some things that were going on in her life. And she was really struggling. And um, I told her, we, we were talking about scriptural things at the time I was studying Job. And um, so every day we would just message each other and talk about what we were studying in the scriptures. And as she opened up more and more about what she was experiencing, I asked her if she had put on the armor of God. And I told her about the experience that I had with my husband. And so she did that. Um, she visualized herself actually putting on the actual armor of God. And she, the, the problems that she had been facing, they almost just kind of dissolved out of her life. So it was just, um, she tells me that it changed her life. And then um, I, we decided, because it had made such a difference in both of our lives, to host a retreat. And that happened last December. And I, I'm so, so grateful for the inspiration that came for us to do that. It was an amazing experience. I learned so much about this that we're talking about. And um, it, I don't know, it just, I, I saw a lot of things that were opened up to me that um, what Paul talks about in Ephesians 6, writing rulers of darkness and principalities and all of the things that we're up against, that those are real things. And a lot of people are walking around in this world not realizing how real those things actually are. And they are affecting us every day. And Heavenly Father has provided this thing for us to not be affected by those things. But most people aren't taking advantage of it. And so um, I'm going to share my screen for a second. So let's see. This is one. All right, we're going to. Let's see. 
here it is. Okay, so this is my slideshow from my um, retreat that I did. But we're just gonna run through it briefly. I love, love, love this scripture. And um, what happened is when I saw my husband putting on these shoes, I saw as if he was on the earth, but it was like, what I could see in my mind's eye was this glass rock like looking structure. It, it was this, it was like a crystal glowing with this white blue light. And he was standing on it, but he wasn't like connected to it until he put those shoes on. I saw how the light almost like it went around him and it connected to his feet and it went up over him. And so when I first started doing this, I thought that um, the armor was grounding us to the spirit of the earth. That's what I kept telling people when I was telling them about it. And that just didn't make sense to me. As I was speaking it out loud, something felt like that wasn't right. And so one day I asked Heavenly Father what were actually, because I felt like if you know what grounding is, just like a tree grows roots into the earth, it is grounded there, right? Wind can blow upon it and it won't move. It's steadfast. And we hear that word a lot in the scriptures. So I was thinking, what are we actually grounding into? And so I prayed about it and I heard the family of God, which we, we know in John when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he tells us that we need to be born again, right? And um, that we need to join ourselves in the family of God. And I thought, why would we want to be grounded in the family of God? I just, so I had a lot of questions about it and I did a lot of study. And um, I love the scripture from Second Timothy, especially the last line that a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly finished, and do all good work. But um, the whole idea of all of these pieces of this armor, armor are they are supposed to bring us closer to Christ, right? They're supposed to help us be more righteous and saved by him and um, know his truth and, and live by it and know his word and use his word in our daily lives. And I just to see how there are evil seducers on the earth who are deceiving and being deceived, I don't, one of my biggest fears is to be someone who my lamp isn't full of oil and be deceived in the last days and not be ready when Christ comes. And so one of the ways we prepare ourselves to meet him is by putting on this armor every day because it changes us, it grounds us in that family of God, right? Just like Nicodemus said, be born again in the family of, or to Christ. Christ said to Nicodemus to be born again in the family of God. This is one way to help us on that path, is to choose to put on this armor, to not fall into those temptations. And I just, I love, love, love this scripture. I feel like the principles that are taught in, in this verse, in these verses, they really align with what I have seen from God and what happens when we choose to to do that. Um, so we're going to go through each piece, and I'm just going to teach a couple of pieces. Um, oh, one more thing, going back to this, I'm thinking about being born in the um, family of God. But after I, I did that prayer session and I asked about it, um, you know how sometimes you don't see something until you're ready to see it? <laughs> I had been praying, and I, I had read through these verses so many times, but I was coming from that perspective now of, oh, we're grounded in, in the family of God. And if you go to Ephesians chapter 6, the first verse says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is great. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And then it talks about fathers not provoking children, and slaves and masters. And I thought, whoa. It was right there the whole time. This is about the family of God. And I just didn't see it because I wasn't asking the right questions yet. So 
um, what are the pieces? There are actual pieces like that you would put on items of clothing. And then there are two extras that aren't on here because they're not, but I'll talk about them in just a second. Um, I'm scrolling through to get to those so that I can talk about them when we're ready for it. Okay, so the armor of God. This is, as I said before, found in Ephesians chapter six. So the thing that it starts with is the belt. It says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loin were about with the truth. So the belt of truth is the first piece. And um, if, I don't know, I think this is, this is a principle that has made a huge impact in my life. Um, there is a verse in Doctrine and Covenants that I love that talks about how blessings are received upon obedience to the laws of the kingdoms upon which they are predicated. And Russell M. Nelson, he's a heart surgeon and someone I believe to be a voice of God. And he, in his secular education, to become a heart surgeon was paramount in surgery and creating um, a lot of the technology that we use today in medicine. And one of those things is the heart lung machine. But how that came about was that scripture. He read that and thought, what are the laws of a beating heart? And so really applying this idea of universal law and those are the laws by which God works. And we can apply those in our own life by obedience to them. There are blessings that will come from it. And because of his questioning of that principle, his whole life and people's lives were saved and transformed and have open heart surgery now because of that question from that idea. It's just a principle, right? And so I think the belt of truth is Christ. It's it's his it's the principles that he lives by and that he calls us to live by. And um it 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 holds our weapon like the belt in a piece of armor would hold the sword. That's where you would put your sword when you're not using it. So it's just really um I just love that the first part if you think that truth is Christ that first part points us straight to Jesus Christ. Um, the next verse says the breastplate of righteousness. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, having on the breastplate of righteousness. And to me, I think it's so important that righteousness is tied to our hearts because it shows that this is a choice that we are making. We don't have to do this, but if we just like I said before, the blessings come according to obedience to the laws upon which they are predicated. If we, in our hearts, choose to put on that righteousness and walk the path that he has trod and shown how the way to go, if we sacrifice our hearts to him, we will be protected. That's the vital organ of our heart, right? The thing that provides life, blood, there's... There is so much depth. I could talk on this for hours, but I don't have time to do that and I don't want it to take too long. But it just, I want you to understand how important and how wonderful this is. So that's the breastplate of righteousness is next. And then it says, um, your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. And I just wanted to mention this fun little thing. Um, when I was working on my husband, it was shown to me that the fibers that these shoes were made of on his feet were created from every time he chose the gospel. So every time he chose Christ. And it was like pre-mortal and through his mortal life, like every time he chose the Savior, those fibers were formed and strengthened. And I just, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. And it meant so much to me when I learned that. 
um, and peace. I mean, that comes from Christ, right? That Christ is the only one in this life. And what a blessing um, to walk in peace, like if you can think about that imagery. Uh, it says, verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And I I just think how um, that is such an offensive thing of picking up your faith and choosing when doubts are flying at you to hold your faith in front of it. And so faith comes before doubt. Then um, in verse 17, take the helmet of salvation. And salvation comes from Christ, right? And I think there's so much imagery about joining our hearts and minds together. And I think a lot of times logic gets in the way of accepting Christ in our lives because we, Heavenly Father is very symbolic, right? And so a logic mind, logic human mind has a really hard time accepting Christ and understanding all of the symbology of Christ's life, and his sacrifice and his atonement and his his resurrection and how fitting for us to protect our minds with his salvation that i just i love it so much uh the next part says and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and something that i learned about this last year is the sword is two-edged so um the word on one side and the spirit on the other, right? And it'll come in with the extra two pieces that I was going to talk about. But the word of God is scripture, right? And so we need to be in scripture on a regular basis, understanding his word and how he teaches so that when the time comes, part of this um, ensemble, we defend with God's word. So we need to be speaking at God's word. And we need to invite the spirit to abide in us so that we know what word to draw upon when it's time to raise and lower that sword. Um, I hope this is making sense. So we need to ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us and we need to, um, to use God's word. I'm sharing my I forgot that I was doing that. I'm just double checking to make sure there's no mistakes on there. Um, so we need to know God's word and speak God's word by the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit to really make use of that sword and cut the things that are trying to come upon us out of our lives. Okay, so this is um, the last part. There's two extra things. In verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So I saw, really, I, it's kind of only one, but the last part or two parts um, is prayer. It's word of mouth, right? And so actually speaking this out of our bodies is part of the arm there's the two defensive parts that we have everything else is offensive right the helmet the breastplate the shield the belt and the shoes they're all off but the sword and the words that we speak are defense and i saw how important it is for us to bridle our passions and be in control of what we are speaking because that, if you're speaking things that are contrary to God's law and God's truth, that's inviting these fiery darts to come against you. But if you're speaking God's law and his truth, it pushes those dark things away from you. And so it's just so important for us. And then prayer. Um, if you haven't done it yet, I, I can link it in the description. Um, there is a session that I did called um heaven's conduit i'm gonna write a note for myself to link that um heaven's conduit is what when i prayed 
to know how prayer actually works. I saw this system and it's like pipes. And so I talk about it in that in that session, but um I just one of the parts of that system is the holy scriptures. And when you speak scripture out of your body, it really has a power and it's a defensive weapon that you have, but most people don't use it. So all right. All of that. I just wanted to talk, I kind of talked about this already, the family of God, that we're grounded in the family of God when we have this armor on. So um, I loved these scriptures and I kind of already talked about them when I introduced it in the beginning. Uh, and then we're ready to go into this. So wait, first things first, I'm going to stop sharing this in just a second. Sometimes my meeting will keep me out. So um, you can take a screenshot of this for a second if you want to, or you can come back to it later. But we're going to stop sharing and I'm going back to my meeting. Okay. I'm just going to get a little bit more comfortable for a second while I get ready to work on this. Okay. So when it comes to actually putting on the armor, um, there I see a lot of blocks about joining the family of God because we don't have perfect families in this earthly life, right? Hold on just a second. And a lot of trauma around families can um, block us from wanting to choose God, right? And so we're going to work on that um, those blocks first. But before I get into the, the work of this session, um, something that I wanted to mention is how I have seen that there are so many people that it's almost like this armor is available, but it's sitting on a shelf. And they just haven't put it on. And people who I've worked with, um, they're like, well, how do I put it on? And you can just imagine yourself putting it on. But I have found that taking some time to journal about and ask Heavenly Father if you can have it, there's just something because this is a gift from him. And um, I don't know, it's just, it might not mean anything to you, but for a lot of people who I've worked with, that exercise of asking for it. So basically you would do like, you can just pray about it. <laughs> However you pray and ask him if you have the armor and if you're wearing it, and if not, how can you put it on? And whatever the answer is that comes down, write it down. And I just think there's something about like that going back to the righteousness and the, the breastplate of righteousness and choosing God in our life. There's something so sacred and special about asking him for the gifts that he has for us that bring us closer to him and help us learn how he communicates with us. So um, that is something that I'm, I really recommend doing after this session. We're not going to do it right now. Um, but if you want to pause for like 10 to 15 minutes and do that, if you're watching the replay, I totally think that that would be okay. Or if you're on live right now, um, this is something that I would recommend doing over the next few days and just see how it goes. So uh, we're going to say that being here is a sign to him that you want this in your life. So, okay. Looking at my outline to make sure I'm not missing anything. We're going into the blocks of not wanting to put ground in front of my father's family. So, to start this work, um, we're just going to take a couple of deep breaths and relax our bodies for a minute. Um, you can do this while you're driving or folding laundry or whatever, but just take a second to kind of breathe in through your nose, hold a breath for a few seconds, and then let it out through your mouth. You can imagine water or light coming down your body and be aware of any tension. A lot of times it's in our jaws and our neck. So as you breathe out of your mouth, imagine that it's like water or light washing through your body and it releases that tension and lets it out. So I'm just going to do it one time right now. Let's take a deep breath in. Hold. Breathe 
release. Okay. All right. Um, to start this off, there is a song that my friend Catherine Bullock introduced me to that I love, love, love so much. I'm going to link it in the description. Um, it's called Head to Toe by a woman named, it's called the Armor of God song. It's Head to Toe, parentheses, the Armor of God song. And um, it's by a woman named Chrissy Knuckles, N-O-C-K-E-L-S. And it's on YouTube. Um, but it's a lullaby. And it talks about the armor of God. And I was going to play it, but I didn't want to get kicked off. <laughs> so I'm not going to play it. Um, I'm going to go through it, though, myself. So I didn't want this video to get kicked off of YouTube for um, copyright reasons. So I'm going to sing through it once. And what I want you to do while I'm singing through it is just keep doing that breathing exercise that we just did. Take deep breaths, hold them, and then release them. And I want you to imagine first a baby in a perfect parent's care. So maybe you didn't have parents who took good care of you. So we're going to imagine what a perfect parent would be like. And so I want you, as I sing, to imagine this baby kind of like growing up through their toddler years, all of the years where they're absolutely 100% dependent on this parent. And what a perfect parent would do. They they come when the child is crying. They hold them dearly. They don't speak loudly to them. They feed them and change them and clean them. Imagine what that would look like. So just in your mind, imagine that kind of relationship with a parent and a child as I think. And then the next part is um, kind of like halfway through the song. So when I get to the chorus again, imagine an elderly parent in care of their grown child. And this child has an absolutely perfect relationship with this parent and they take care of them in the most perfect way. So imagine them feeding and I want you to, if you can, feel the emotions that would come to that. There, there's sorrow for this parent who has lived their lives and there might be a feeling of like they've lost their dignity to rely so much on someone else to take care of them. But there's also a sacredness, and a peace in knowing that they are taken care of by someone who cares about them. and have all of our needs met this child is perfect and so as i go through this just imagine wherever your imagination goes think about those two things <sighs> little one please in the power of the lord let the keeper of the stars keep your heart forevermore. Even though you might be small, it is in you his kingdom reign. From your mouth the Lord has made a fountain for his praise and with his righteousness across your chest salvation for your head the belt of truth around you now with the shield of faith in hand and with his peace upon your feet Everywhere you go, his word will be the sword your covered head to toe. 
You're everything to do. Oh, the night is quickly fading, and the day will soon break in. And with the dawn, the Lord will give the grace you need to stand and turn your worries into songs. Put on your covering and you will not the music you in this fun. And with his righteousness across your chest, salvation for your head. The belt of truth around you now with the shield of faith in hand. And with his peace upon your feet, everywhere you go. His word will be the sword your covered head to toe. And with your peace upon your feet, everywhere you his word will be your covered head. All right. Thanks for I really recommend looking up her version on YouTube. I'll post it in the description so that you can find it later. Um, I will say I listen to that song on a weekly basis out for my walks in the mornings. I feel like just, um, I don't know, just listening to it, it's almost like all of the work that I've done in that summer, it strengthens it. And I, some, because of like, I don't know, some pieces get taken off. And so just set an intention that every time you listen to that song, the pieces just get put on and they're strengthened by the choices that you make to live a righteous life in Christ. Um, and so, yeah, if you want a, an easy way to put this armor on and to keep it on, set an alarm in your phone to go back and listen to that song of the week. Just to keep it in your heart and to, to keep that armor strong around you. All right. We are going go into each piece and so to, to make sure we don't have any comp okay if you can imagine someone standing in a dark room facing a mirror and they are just devastated i when i do this in my own mind a lot of times i think of mulan so if you are someone who struggles with imagery and you need something to think about that is just where my mind goes for some reason so that might not that might help you but you could see yourself um, I've worked with someone who her husband is in the military, and so that's who she saw. But just imagine a person standing in a dark room, and they are in a more ravaged area, and they're just devastated. They can't go on anymore. It's dark. They can see vaguely the outline of themselves in this mirror that they're looking in, but it's hard to even look at themselves. It just feels like there is so much darkness. If you've ever been in a place where it just feels like it's actually pressing in on you, that's how this person feels. So we're just gonna take a second to sit with them and acknowledge devastation is what keeps coming up, but there's fear and worry and anger and frustration, confusion, which makes a lot of sense when you think about 
at the time that Paul was teaching to them how much chaos and confusion there was. Just keep taking some deep breaths and imagining the person in this dark room and taking space for all of the emotions that they're feeling. There's grief coming up. Hatred, worthlessness, a feeling of being deceived and also feelings of wanting to deceive. I just feel like there's like a lot coming up. So I'm just holding space for it for these moments. Okay. We are going to imagine that a door opens up to this room and light pours in, but it's almost like the light isn't spreading. It's like a beam of light. And a person walks in and it's like a grandfather figure. And he comes in, and the light is actually coming from him. And he walks in, and this person has collapsed on the floor in front of the mirror. And they're just sobbing on the floor. Um, and he puts his hand on their shoulder. And he doesn't say anything. He just rests his hand on their shoulder and sits with them. And imagine that they finally look up into his face and there's feelings of, how could you do this? How could you let me come to this place? This is not what I thought it would be. I have been deceived. This is so hard. This is so difficult. This is not what I signed up for. I cannot go on anymore. And just like a loving grandfather would, he has a twinkle in his eye and he doesn't say anything. He just listens and lets them say whatever they want to say to him. So now imagine that the man stands up and there is a trunk in the room, like a a case or um, a test, whatever comes to your mind. And imagine that he opens this chest up and he starts pulling pieces of armor out of it. And he lays them across a rock that is next to the chest and see him hold this belt of truth and walk over to his beloved and have them stand up. And he puts the belt around their waist and fastens it with the truth of Christ. And see that as it's fastened, that light starts coming out of the belt and kind of goes out through and around the body of this person so devastated. And they feel that sick feeling that gets in your stomach when you know something is wrong, you're devastated by something. It is filled with a comforting feeling, almost like comfort food. I don't know why not where my mind is going, but they feel that comforting in their gut instead of that sick devastating, grieving feeling when the belt is fastened. And see the man go back to the bed and he picks up the breastplate and see him go back over and he puts it over their head and fastens it. And when it's fastened, light starts emanating from the breastplate and see how goes in and around them and pierces their heart and feel 
a swelling of the heart that starts to take place when that light is present. And it lifts their spirit. And they look back in the mirror and they can start to see themselves clearly now because there's more light in the and what was blurry before starts taking more form and sharper shape and the image that they see reflected back to them. And they feel as if they can stand tall before themselves now. Everything isn't perfect, but it's a lot better than it was a few moments ago. Just keep breathing deeply. If you feel like yawns or anything, Okay, imagine that the man goes back to the bed. And he grabs the shoes and he comes and imagine him putting them on this person. And I don't know why, but I feel like I need to. Some of you might see that it tickles as the shoe goes on and it perks up a grin around the face of this person as the tickling shoe comes on. And see him, if your shoes have laces or buckles, however they're fastened on the feet, see that process taking place. So he might be lacing up the shoes or buckling them together. And as he does so, light starts emanating from the shoes. And see the light grow almost like roots into the earth underneath the feet of this person. Roots of light coming out from their feet into the center of the center of the earth and out every direction. See them stand tall, facing the mirror again. See him go back to the bed and pick up a shield of faith. And see him bring it to them. And they hold out their hands confidently and take this shield in their hand. And see as they clasp their hand around the handle of this shield, the same thing happens. The light emanates from the shield and goes up through their arm and out through their body. And forms a bubble of light around their body. Okay. Keep breathing deeply. Imagine he goes back to the bed and picks up a sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and brings it back and places it in their other hand and feel what that would feel like. Feel the weight of that sword in your hand and the responsibility that comes with knowing, but also the power that comes with knowing. And that the more you know and understand and speak the word of God, the more that comes against you, you can cut out of your life with the power and use of this sword. That the light, as they grasp the sword, emanates from the sword and through throughout their body. And I see almost like a channel coming from the hand that is around the sword. Like you can think of it as like a pipe or a river, and it goes through the arm and up to the mouth, and allows them to speak the words that they need to speak at the time that they need to speak them. Goes back to the bed one more time and picks up the helmet of salvation. And he brings it back and gently places it over their head 
And as he does so, I see this beam of light. It comes down from heaven, but it it comes from the helmet and it goes through the body of the person and up toward heaven. And I saw like a beacon. <laughs> and so when they're wearing this helmet, it's like a beacon of salvation and truth. And it draws in those things around them. So they're taking up so much space around this person that there's almost no room for darkness to come in. And it's like, it's an anti-beacon for darkness and it repels it away. Take a deep breath. Okay. Um, the last thing, I'm really going to recommend my um, conduit, Heaven's Conduit session, but I'm going to take a second and just manually go through that for everyone that is listening to this session right now to check on all of the pieces because prayer is the next part of this armor, remember? And not a word has been spoken from the person who was so devastated before to this grandfatherly figure. Just keep thinking for a second while I check on all of this. If you feel like there's a piece that isn't fitting right or it doesn't feel right or you can't put it on, um, imagine that it's almost like there are crumbs inside of the pieces making them not fit right that are keeping them from making contact with the body. And imagine angels come in and they just flick them away. Like they just flick those crumbs and it first into dust and blows away. All right. Okay. I'm going to wait to see if there's any comments, but while I'm waiting, I, okay, so now would be the time that if you have questions or you feel like something was weird or didn't go right, now would be the time to type them in there. I don't know why there's such a lag between my video and the comments, and I apologize for that, but, um, we're going to ground ourselves while we wait for comments to come in. So imagine roots growing out from your feet and out every direction to the center of the center of the earth. And imagine that when the roots reach the center of the earth, that light comes up from the center of the earth through the root system, up through your feet and your ankles and your legs and your hips and your torso and shoulders and out your arms and fingers up your neck into your head and out through the top of your head the crown of your head sorry sometimes i when i am processing stuff tears start <laughs> uh okay take a deep breath from your belly hold it Release. I don't see any comments coming in. I'm just going to check 
Facebook really quick because sometimes people will like chat with me or message me if things are going wrong in my sessions and I don't see anything coming up on there. One thing that I did, I wasn't, I've never shared this before, but I feel like now is the time. <laughs> um, I have dealt with a lot of darkness in my life for some reason. And um, I love, there's a book that I read a long time ago called The Compound Effect. That's where I got this. And I'm sure that he got it from somewhere else, Darren Hardy is the name of the author of this book, but um, this is our session. So if you feel like you are on live and you're ready to um, go do something else, you're welcome to. Thank you for doing this. I hope that this makes a big impact in your life, but um, I just, I feel like sharing this. And so I'm going to take a second to do that and see if any comments come in while I share this. Um, so in that book, he talks about a pendulum and your life is like a pendulum where if you have felt one degree of an emotion you have the ability to feel the opposite and that's what that is when we were talking about spiritual principles earlier that is a spiritual principle that there is opposition in all things right and the first half of my life was filled with sorrow and there was just a lot of stuff in my life. Um, I don't know. I, I was, I watched a lot of dark things as a child that I shouldn't have been watching. And I listened to a lot of music that I shouldn't have listened to. And I will just say it really does make a difference in our lives, what we choose to influence us and what we choose to invite into our homes and our hearts. And I saw the effects of that in my late teens and early 20s. I was choosing good things, but I was also um, allowing a lot of these temptations to work their way to my life as well. And I had a lot of dark experiences because of that. And as I have learned more about this concept of principles and obedience to them, there are scriptures that talk about how you can be perfected in Christ and things that were once a temptation, the things will be made strong. And I I can see that in my life. I've had experiences with that. And um, I've had experiences where I have seen dark things in my life. But when my friend and I did this retreat last year, there, the, I, okay, I'm going to go back to Ephesians 6 and go to what we were watching. So, um, Ephesians 6, verse 3. It says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, the thing that I haven't shared is while we were at the retreat, um, I was doing this session and my husband came in to bring us some groceries. And the spirit was so strong. I knew that. I could feel it. And he walked in and he walked. We were upstairs working on this session. And he said that he could feel something as he walked to the door of the house where we were holding our reception. He had no clue what was going on. He didn't know what we were working on when he came to the house. But it's something that he it, it made a physical impression on his body. And he says, um, he walked in and the peace that was in that house was something that he says the spirit was so strong you could the knife. It was just a real temple. 
And I haven't shared this with anyone because it was such an amazing experience for me that I've kind of held it dear. Like my friend Catherine and I, we talk about it all the time because it was just amazing. You had to be there to experience it, right? And but the other thing that happened, as there is opposition in all things, right, is um, we were under attack that weekend, and I didn't realize how real this stuff actually was until we put ourselves that and when we came to that house we were there for hours before anyone else showed up and we were going around the house and praying for protection on the space that we were in because i knew the things that we were going to be talking about that weekend were going to invite opposition and so what i prayed for was for guardian angels to come and stand around the edges of this house and when I prayed for that, I saw images of angels. At, they were outside of the house, standing a few, just every few feet. There was an angel standing guard. And I saw this golden light emanating between them. And um, I don't know. <laughs> there was a night that we had an experience where... there was it was like there was a bubble of golden light around the space that we were in and i could perceive that something was trying to break through and i turned my attention toward it and i could see if you can imagine this house that we were in and this golden bubble around the like the yard of the house then like dark and i i asked intuitively in prayer in prayer how big that was and i think the number that came to my mind was 23 miles and i could feel it and i have a friend who was with me who was also feeling it and we were both just like sitting there my friend another friend was teaching and we could both perceive that there was an attack happening and i i just remember feeling in my mind like being the commander of these angels holding the space that we were in to allow them to stand strong or or tell them like be their commander and like hold the line is what kept coming to my mind and um i just saw this darkness just trying to be in and I saw actual things that I'm not going to to share because I don't think we need to talk about them um I think that sometimes when you talk about the, the darkness it's exciting and exhilarating it is something different and it causes that fight or flight to come upon us right and that in turn, um, messes with the dopamine receptors, right? It, it, that pump of cortisol when something is interesting or intriguing or different or scary, whatever your emotions are that come with it. And we can, we can be drawn to it just because it's exciting and different. And I saw that night, um, I could feel it in my heart when we were starting to go off track at the retreat and the discussions that we were having feels to me like a stirring of waters and I feel it right here in my heart and it's um I don't know like that night when we were having this whole experience we were just trying to calm the waters and still the waters and allow people to talk about what they wanted to talk about but also keep the peace and there's going to be disagreements in your life that will bring questioning and doubts, right? But the thing that we want to live with is faith and to hold that shield up so that the doubts can't penetrate. And that's what we were doing, um, my friends and I, that night, was looking at the doubt and allowing that darkness to coexist with us. And you have to acknowledge that it is real. It's a real thing. It's 
there. But to not become excited by it, that you start seeking it. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God, right? And I just want to testify that seeking that kingdom and putting this on God, making the choice to do that and putting it on in your life, it will bring peace that passes understanding because it is based in Christ. So I hope that the spirit of that translates to your heart, but I just want to say that this is a real thing and I've seen it make a real difference in my life. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I had to share that with you tonight. And I hope that this armor makes a real difference in your day to day, day to day. And that you can see how those things that you felt weak in before will become strengthened as you choose to wear and strengthen this armor on a day to day basis. So I will be sure to link those things, Heaven's Conduit, that session, and um, the Head to Toe song by Christine Knuckles because I love that song so much. And she is so wonderful. She's just, it's so beautiful to listen to her sing that song. But um, if you feel inclined, I take donations for my time and their Venmo or PayPal link in the description. So that is how you can use that if you feel like this has made a positive influence in your life and you want to donate to more my time. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If that's not something that is within your needs right now, I understand. And I appreciate likes and subscribe here on YouTube because it helps this video get out to other people who need stuff like this. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.